All right, let's get started. Uh, today, we have a stand-up meeting for FPGA and for Remote Labs uh, for the 13th of September. And we talk about what we've done over the past week or so, uh, what we have planned for the next week, if we need any resources, and if we have any roadblocks that we need help removing. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. Um, Anshul, why don't you tell us what's going on with the encoder work uh, and anything else that you think is important for us to know about? Yep, sure. Uh, so I have this um, Pluto stream, basically MQTT uh, environment. It's set up, I'm able to compile. Um, and run it on PS. So I have MQTT server running on PS, then Pluto stream running on, and MQTT control. So all the hard coded things have been removed, and um, the register mismatches, which which we discussed on Slack earlier, they have been resolved. Now I posted, and um, I posted the logs also uh, when I'm Pluto stream runs. Now I want to understand. Uh, what runs on the PC that will communicate with Pluto stream and Mosquito server running on PS. So I posted the question uh, for Everest on Slack and I think whenever he gets time, he will reply to it. Apart from that, um, I've been busy with uh, Versatune. Um, I have received the device uh, and my setup is set up on windows laptop is ready uh, following the steps in manual uh, and uh, testing the device and getting up to speed uh, of getting up to speed of uh, running the software and um, uh, familiarizing more with its functionality uh, once that's done then i will jump into the code and will work on improving the functionality so yeah that's me uh, and uh, Michelle, if you have any idea of the about the question that I have posted in Slack, then please reply. In Versatin, or no. in oh, in FPGA. FPGA. Okay, yeah. I will look at it um, yeah. right after this meeting. Sure, thank you. That's me. No, thank you. The wonderful amount of of work on two uh, really interesting projects, and um, really looking forward to. Um, Versatin being being unveiled and uh, very much uh, looking forward to the our our downlink uh, encoder at transmitting. Um, so in order to to help our downlink, we we need to start thinking about the uplink receiver. So I have a little bit to share on that. I'm going to share uh, some some slides here. Oopsie do. Okay, do you see P4XT uplink receiver? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Always good to check. Okay, so for our uplink receiver, because we need to receive on the uplink and transmit on the downlink, and, and so far, the majority of our FPGA focus has been on the downlink. Um, so a little bit of attention on the uplink is probably good. Um, so what I'm starting out with here is a very simple frequency shift keying receiver in Verilog. Um, and this is sort of what it looks like. This is from a repo, an open source repository. I'll put the link, the links at the end um, that we found. And the, the basic top level block looks like this. So you have a baseband clock, and then you have these two values, uh, V short and V long, and a flag bit. The, out, the output is a register that's bit out. Uh, register in Verilog means a variable. Uh, that holds its value uh, between updates. Uh, so it's confusing because a register is also means something in hardware, but in Verilog, register is a type of variable. Inside this um, this top block, you can see the two S's and the E dot D edge detector and two synchronizers. So when you look at the synchronizer block, it has a clock and then it has a 16-bit input and a 16-bit output. And it is really a synchronizer. It uh, It helps line things up in time. And so when we dug into the code for, uh, well, first we dug into the code for the edge detector and it takes something called a flag bit. And as you'll see, the flag bit is the most significant bit from the ADC. So every positive going uh, clock, we, we check this. Uh, we have uh, something like a shift register 
inside. And what we're looking for is the is the negative going um, uh, signal for the, for flag bit. So the negative going uh, when the, when the most significant bit of the ADC goes negative, we pay attention to that signal and we call it flag bit cross. Okay, and so here's where we start to look. I think this is the synchronizer. So we we picked through the synchronizer. It's from Edis Research. So this is uh, a, a, a body of work from from Edis Research. Uh, some some very neat stuff. It's it's written in a very flexible way. Uh, so we should probably talk more about that. But what we did is just we went through the code to make sure we understood what it was doing, and we're we're satisfied that just what it's doing is is synchronizing values to that may be changing to to the clock. Um, this is the very basic level of what this particular receiver is doing. So it takes a FM uh, signal and it the ADC then produces uh, a value, a digital value, but we're just taking the most significant bit and we're calling that the flag bit. And so what happens is that this turns um, signals that look like, uh, you can see on the bottom right, signals that are frequency shift keying that are that are periodic signals, more like a, a sine, sine wave. And it's gonna turn them it, into essentially square waves. And then as long as it doesn't go negative, we the we count uh, up from the baseband clock. Uh, and you can see what happens here. So the the longer, um, you know, lower frequency tones let you count more baseband clocks. And the uh, higher frequency tones, you you hit that negative going uh, you know, transition earlier. And these V short and V long are selected to where we can differentiate between our two uh, tones. So this is a binary FSK. So the limitations on the BB clock, obviously it can't be more than two to the 16th faster than the waveform or you'll, you'll roll it. Um, and then here's another view of like how these, these two limits are, are, uh, are can be seen. So this is a very simple FSK receiver to start out with. The original repo is here. Um, we forked it and we'll add some documentation and we're thinking of modifying it to, to four FSK, which is what we uh, are gonna use on the, the uplink. So this works when the signal is really pretty solid, high SNR, and it is very simple. It's not a lot of lines of Verilog. It was tested on a Z board. Uh, so this is this is something that we can we can adapt and target and have a simple, FSK receiver, if we wish, um, on our ZC706 and our ADRV9371. All right, so that concludes like what we're starting to to look at and learn and and feel through for for the uplink. Um, there are a lot of more complicated ways that give you higher performance um, to do an uplink receiver, um, but we got to start somewhere. So having also having a, a variety of examples of of good code for for HDL for people to learn. That's that's one of our missions at ORI. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen. And then, does anybody have any questions about this or or any ideas for next steps or cri criticisms of next steps to to kind of expand it to for FSK and and do some modeling? Okay, that's what we'll that's what we'll be doing in the in the in the near term. Um, it'd be really nice if we could get something working, showing it working. Um, in in other words, match the this particular repositories uh, over the air tests on the Z board uh, by next week. But that might be. But I, I don't know what problems we will encounter because. Uh, <laughs> so what. Our goal will be to get something, a very simple receiver, uplink receiver working so that we can uh, capture the signals that we're uh, generating with Opulent Voice, our protocol for the uplink. Okay, uh, Paul, you have any any reports about Remote Lab or any FPGA work? Very little going on in the, in the Remote Lab this week. Um, I did reboot some of the VMs that have been sitting there for a while just general maintenance, um, everything otherwise is situation normal. 
Um, not too much going on FPGA wise either for me. I helped out a little bit with that uh, FSKD modulator, but otherwise I've been working on other things. Yeah, thank you for all the efforts. All right. My pleasure. Rick, have any questions or comments? No. Um, that's fascinating stuff uh, that you put on the whiteboard there. Um, I have a said board. I've been looking for something to do with it recently. I, I spent a lot of time with it some years ago, and I haven't picked it up since. And now I'm getting really interested again. So if you have any software that I can play with, um, I guess I guess you've got it on the on, on the repository. I might download it and get out my Z board again. Yeah, this would be uh, this would be something that uh, that I think would be pretty pretty fun. I was happy to find it. Um, so yeah, it's a Z board, and then I think they added the uh, FMC uh, FM Comms three, which I know is like a, a, a sort of a RF mezzanine type of board. Um, but yeah, the uh, I'll post the the link to the to the repository from MCU Pro, and uh, and if you can take a crack at it and enjoy it, then that'll be that's a victory as far as I'm concerned. Well, there, there is plenty of stuff out there for the Z board. It's highly popular. Oh, yeah, yeah, lots, and it's a it's a good one. But it's a lot more fun when it's something your friends are working on. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. <laughs> but uh, you, you mentioned the RF mezzanine board. I didn't buy the mezzanine board when I bought the Z board because it was horrendously expensive. Yeah, yeah. Some it of them are. One, so I don't know which one. Uh, I, I don't know if that one is affordable. I'm or, not, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure of the price. I, I, I think we should probably go, go we could probably go track it down. Yeah, yeah I'll take a look at it because putting an RF board on the Z board makes a lot of sense to yes. us guys who like RF. Exactly, it's a good combo with lots of lots of code. Uh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll uh, I'll catch up with you off offline and see what yeah, we'll see cool. if we can see what trouble we can get into. Okay, James, do you have uh, some reports about the remote lab? It's remote lab South. Nothing too in particular. We're getting in more materials to do more repairs on the, uh, <clears throat> apologies, on the main outbuilding that will be the house for Remote Lab South. So we've been doing more work there, but nothing too major to report. Just uh, checking in with everybody else this week. Yeah, cool. Steady progress, sounds like. Yeah. Just awesome. uh, keep it on, keep it on. All right. Does anybody need anything? Any resources needed? Cool. Okay, we'll keep working. These are the different areas. We got, uh, you know, lots of. F oh yeah, and there's there's uh, our FPGA content um, is going to be represented this upcoming weekend at Ham Expo. So we have a total of five talks at Ham Expo that cover a variety of work, and our high flyer proposal for the open source HEO will be one of the talks. And in the talk, we go into um, kind of our view of like how the, the FPGA uh, board will function with we'll talks about fault detection, uh, some talks talk about uh, sort of failover operation, things like that. So, you know, we've talked a little here about the progress on the uplink and we've talked about uh, progress on the, on the downlink. Uh, the stuff that happens in between will become very important very soon. So, all of that fun stuff, which may or may not be FPGA, obviously it may be firmware, um, but we have a, a, a decent idea about how we want things to work. Um, so we are going to need prototypes of that uh, functioning, working stuff over, you know, that's, that's the goal and that's uh, something we prioritize pretty high. So be aware, we have lots of content that'll be presented at the upcoming Ham Expo. All of this will, all of the recordings of the presentations, as soon as the platform closes, because Ham Expo platform's open for a month, as soon as it closes, then our 
YouTube playlist of all of these talks will uh, be live uh, over over on YouTube. Uh, and all of the talks will also be on Vimeo uh, for as long as Ham Expo's around. They have uh, they keep all of the talks from from, from all of their their expos and their showcase over on Vimeo. So good stuff. We have previous good talks, and we're going to add five more. Uh, we'll have a booth uh, and a lounge for people to to speak with us. Uh, and we're also we also have a couple of three different or two or three different presentations in the new projects area. So the projects area of Ham Expo is where you can put a poster session like we have, uh, or a document or about a product. So it's divided into projects that are amateur or, or nonprofit and products from from companies. Uh, so you'll see a variety of of showcases. Um, and in most most cases, there are uh, these ability to have like a Q and A session. Um, you know, you leave a question for the for the person that presents the uh, that particular project, and so usually Ham Expo is uh, semi live uh, presentation. So you get a video presentation in the live Q and A. The new projects area is just here's the document. Leave a question, and we'll get back to you. Uh, but a, a way to showcase without requiring a, a video presentation. Uh, so we have some content in this new area uh, as well. So I'll. Uh, We'll be writing up uh, a summary of the, the uh, Ham Expo stuff later today uh, to go out on the, the mailing list and on social media to let everybody know that we have plenty of things to see at Ham Expo. And a lot of it is FPGA related. <clears throat> okay, any last questions or comments before we close? You know, I, I forgot to share something with you. Go ahead. I have received my first ever PC board and with a complex out, uh, outline. <laughs> I've never oh, yeah. done a PC board that was not rectangular before. This is a mezzanine board for the Pluto. And I think you've seen Plutos before. And this is designed to provide additional features to a Pluto to make it work on a satellite system. Uh, so I'm looking forward to putting my board in the oven and getting parts on it to see if it works. Outstanding. That's really cool. Yeah, I do an awful lot of PC board layout these days. Yeah, but like you said, almost all of them are rectangular. Yeah, this one uh, this one was really challenging, shall we say. <laughs> but uh, I mean, the layout itself wasn't hard, but because a lot of room on the board, but. Boy, getting that shape was great. <laughs> that was that was something else. But a new dimension. Uh, yeah. yeah, I had to reverse engineer the Pluto board to get the shape the same, and then I had to add the extensions that we needed for the new features. Oh, very good. But, um, hopefully, it'll work. I'm, I've got some <laughs> an order. We'll put it in the oven. And see, see what happens. Right on. That's how it goes. Yeah, thank you for sharing. That's that's really interesting. All right, everybody. See you on Slack and on the mailing list. And uh, if all goes well, uh, here next week for another another meetup. Thank you so much, all of you, for all of the hard work, for all of the different things that that you're doing. Um, it's a it's a privilege to to be able to to see it and to to help it happen. All right, everybody. See you soon. Thank you. All right.